Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Flectus channel. With more than 689,000 personnel, the U.S. Air Force supports five core functions, including global strike, air superiority, rapid global mobility, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, and command and control. However, the most important mission of the U.S. Air Force is to maintain air superiority using advanced fighter jets like the F-22 and F-35 that offer strength and agility and strategic bombers such as the B-2 Spirit. To ensure the U.S. Air Force excels in aerial combat and is equipped with advanced technology for modern warfare, a scientific research and development detachment named Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, develops advanced materials, sensors, and weapon systems to improve aircraft performance, survivability, and effectiveness. AFRL's research ensures the U.S. Air Force maintains technological superiority and adapts to emerging threats. AFRL recently developed a new, low-cost, air-delivered capability for defeating maritime threats. On April 28, 2022, an F-15 Strike Eagle released one modified GBU-31 Joint Direct Attack Munition as part of the Quick Sync exercise. This missile successfully destroyed a full-scale surface vessel in the Gulf of Mexico. You see, torpedoes such as Mark 48 are still the primary method used to sink enemy ships. However, whenever a Navy submarine launches a torpedo, it gives away its own location and becomes a target. Through QuickSync, the AFRL wanted to develop a low-cost method of achieving torpedo-like seaworthy skills from the air at a much higher pace and over a much larger area as compared to a submarine. The GBU-31 launched by the F-15 destroyed the entire keel of the ship, causing it to sink immediately. A guided bomb unit, GBU, also known as a smart bomb, is a precision guided munition that carries a guidance system monitored and controlled by an external device. Since the creation of precision-guided munitions, the older bombs were renamed as unguided bombs, or dumb bombs, as they could not alter their direction after being released from the aircraft. A guided bomb usually carries fewer explosives to accommodate the guidance mechanisms. It is released from an aircraft like a traditional bomb, but is guided by a remote control after launch. The pilot releases the weapon and via remote control, searches for the target. Once the target is acquired, the weapon can be locked to the target or manually guided via the data link system.
The U.S. Air Force has a team of munitions airmen who yeah. build and prepare GBU bombs for fighter jets to carry out airstrikes. These ordnance handlers are well trained in manufacturing and assembling different types of bombs. To learn how to make original bombs, the airmen are tasked with building inert GBU-12s. Inert bombs usually contain inert materials, such as concrete rather than explosives. The munitions airmen use different types of tools to assemble a standard sized inert GBU-12 bomb. It is now time to load the bomb onto an aircraft. One of the simplest bombs to load and drop onto a target is a GBU-38, particularly due to its minimal launch weight of 559 pounds and a small length of 7 feet and 8.6 inches. GBU-38 is much easier to load onto the aircraft than weapons like the GBU-12 or the GBU-31 because of its small size and light weight. On March 18, 2024, airmen assigned to the 389th Fighter Generation Squadron loaded inert GBU-38s on an F-15E Strike Eagle during the Red Flag Nellis exercise. From the assembly process to its release, hundreds of airmen worked together to make the mission successful. Dropping a guided bomb from a fighter jet is one thing, but releasing it from a bomber is what sends chills down the spine. For the bomb to work properly, it must carefully be mounted onto the bomber which is why the U.S. Air Force trained its weapons load crews to load a GBU-31 bomb on a B-1B Lancer. B-1B Lancer carries the largest conventional payload of both guided and unguided weapons in the Air Force inventory and is considered the backbone of America's long-range bomber force. To load the bomb onto the B-1B, the GBU-31 is first put on a trailer and placed right under the opening of the bomb bay. The load crews, while standing on a folding ladder, physically mount the GBU-31 on the hard points inside the bomb bay. Once the bombs are loaded, the bomber takes off to carry out bombing runs. It was not common to use bombers to destroy battleships in the sea. Early aviation visionaries, such as General Billy Mitchell, foresaw its possibilities. In a milestone test of the new concept of heavy bombing, Mitchell demonstrated the ability of contemporary bombers. Mitchell's Martin bombers sank several ships, such as the Ostfriesland. After an attack by aircraft carrying 1,000-pound bombs, his airmen dropped six 2,000-pound bombs on the battleship. And in 20 minutes, the Ostfriesland was sent to the bottom of the sea. Despite the success, critics of air power remained unconvinced that bombers could destroy a Navy fleet. 
a fact that was negated in the years to follow. This demonstration, however, became the base of the development of bombers in the years to come. There are several ways to destroy a battleship at sea, such as a live fire from ships, aircraft, and even helicopters. During Valiant Shield 2016, the U.S. Navy decommissioned USS Rents, the 46th ship of the Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigates, named after Chaplain George Snavely Rents who selflessly gave his life at the Battle of Sunda Strait. The ship sank in waters 30,000 feet deep and 117 nautical miles northeast of Guam. It took almost five hours for the ship to sink. After sustaining 22 missile hits, it finally succumbed to AGM-114N Hellfire missile shots, fired by MH-60 Seahawk helicopter assigned to the Golden Falcons of Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 12, HSC-12. RIMPAC or Rim of the Pacific, is another renowned exercise in which decommissioned ships are sunk. It is the world's largest international maritime warfare event, hosted by the United States after every two years. RIMPAC is the perfect opportunity to provide thousands of naval and aircraft crew members with the opportunity to participate in realistic combat scenarios. Perhaps the most notable exercise conducted during RIMPAC is Sink X, in which decommissioned vessels are converted into target ships. SYNC-X vessels undergo a certified cleaning process that removes all environmentally harmful material, including trash, floatable material, mercury, fluorocarbon, and petroleum. During this drill, aircraft, submarines, and other vessels fire at the target ship one after another until it sinks. Not only do Sync X participants get a chance to fire real cannons, torpedoes, and anti ship missiles at a real target, but they also get to see the real destructive power of these weapons. The Sync X exercise has been going on for decades and has included several high profile decommissioned vessels. The U.S. military considers Sync X to be one of the best ways to prepare crews for battle scenarios. During the Sync X exercise, the crew stationed on the ships get the chance to perform one of the most unique tasks, which is loading torpedoes. The crew loads torpedoes such as the UGM-84 Harpoon, which is fitted with a solid fuel rocket booster and encapsulated in a container to enable submerged launch through a torpedo tube. Due to the torpedo's explosive capabilities, it takes several crew members to load into the torpedo tube properly. Once loaded, the torpedoes are launched from the surface vessels with rotatable batteries. A special door on the side of the ship's hull opens, and the torpedo battery fires the torpedo into the water, 
and rotates back to its initial position as the hull door closes. During the Sync X exercise, using bombs, missiles, and torpedoes highlights various ways to destroy surface vessels. This exercise perfectly demonstrates the precision of aerial platforms in delivering powerful strikes against maritime targets. The ability to swiftly and effectively neutralize naval threats from the air is a testament to the strategic importance of air superiority. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.